and gentlemen, and welcome to the Saline County Political Forum for the 2018 primary election. We are recording live from Benton High School at the Amphitheater on Tuesday, May 1st, 2018. Tonight's program is presented by Benton Public Schools, MySaline.com, and Fidelity Local 6. We would like to thank Tanya Estelle, Angela White, and Kurt Barger from Benton Public Schools, Shelly Poole of MySaline.com, Ken Yang of Family Council, and Matt Johnson of Fidelity Local 6. Also, thank you for coming, candidates. The Benton High School students participating in tonight's proceedings are Jared Hastings as tonight's moderator, K.K. McCormick as our timekeeper, and myself, Jackie Sherrill, as tonight's master of ceremonies. Candidates will proceed in order of office. They'll have four segments. There will be an opening statement, a closing statement, and in between, they'll each be asked one question from Benton High School students and one question from the local community. Organizers drew names to determine the order. For each segment, the order will flip-flop for the next segment. We'll explain as we go. Each candidate may have a question repeated only once before the time begins. I'll introduce all the races and candidates briefly, and then we'll begin. The Republican candidates for Justice of the Peace District 4 are Justice of the Peace Barbara Howell and Bobby Cullison. The nonpartisan candidates for State Supreme Court Associate Justice Position 3 are David Sterling, and not present due to a family emergency, Supreme Court Justice Courtney Goodson, and due to a scheduling conflict, Judge Kenneth Hickson will not be attending. The Republican candidates for Secretary of State are Commissioner of State Lands John Thurston and State Representative Trevor Drown. After those candidates, we'll take a brief intermission. First up after the intermission will be the Democratic candidates for U.S. Congress District 2, Jonathan Dunkley. The three other candidates will not be present tonight. That includes Gwen Combs, Paul J. Spencer, and Representative Clark Tucker. The nonpartisan candidates for prosecuting attorney District 22 are Chris Walton and Parker Jones. The Republican candidates for State Representative District 28 are Councilman Kerry Murphy and Jason Kelly. The nonpartisan candidates for School Board Position 6 here at Benton are Darren Adams and Chris Ledbetter. The remainder of our candidates are not present. These include the Republican candidates for Justice of the Peace District 11, Clint Chisholm and Mike Creekmore. The Republican candidates for Constable Township 1 Thomas, Tim Bragg, and Don Burrow, and the Republican candidates for Constable Township 2, Constable Bobby Hahn, and Mark Kaiser. At this time, will everyone in the audience please silence all electronic devices. <coughs> Here are the Justice of the Peace candidates running for District 4. Welcome candidates, Justice of the Peace, Barbara Howe, and Mr. Bobby Colson. Ms. Howe, you may begin your opening statement. You have one minute. Thank you. My name is Barbara Howell. I have lived at Lake Norrell for almost 25 years, married to my husband, Jack Howell, who just recently passed away about four months ago. My granddaughter lives with me, and she's here tonight, Catherine Ann Reed. And I have served on the Quorum Court for 14 years, and I have loved serving the people of my district. I love it because I love helping people. I loved being on the quorum court, but each day, practically every day, someone called me for their help. I could connect them with someone else or solve their problem by going and seeing them, visiting them, or talking to them. And I loved the, the idea that it was service that I was providing for all these people. And I've done it for seven terms. It's filing for my eighth term. So I want to thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Howe. Mr. Colson. You may begin your opening statement. Thank you, sir. I'm Bob Cullison. Uh, I've uh, been in law enforcement 34 years. I retired the second time at the end of December, which uh, included uh, 26 years at Little Rock PD, and then I did six years at Saline County Sheriff. Uh, the six years I was at the Sheriff's Department, I went from one in this county to the other and recognized a lot of problems that we were having that's not being addressed. We have entire districts, including District 4, a good half of it, and then most of District 13 that never sees a deputy uh, because the sheriff's asked for personnel and hadn't been able to get them. It's a safety hazard for first responders. You have stabbing, shooting scenes. You got volunteer firemen running up in the open scenes, not knowing if it's been secured or not. Uh, that bothers me. Uh, also, another issue that's come about in the last few years is jail overcrowding. I went through this when I worked at Little Rock PD. 
to write somebody a ticket for dope and guns and everything else, and now that's where we're at in Saline County. We've got some issues that are going to have to be addressed. Okay? That's time. Thank you, sir. Reminder, to each candidate, you may only repeat, have a question repeated once. First question, Mr. Collison. From a county perspective, what would you view as top priorities in taking advantage of the rapid growth experience in Saline County? The rapid growth? Uh, we do have rapid growth, particularly out in our district. We've got several, our voter uh, population has grown by thousands in, in the last 10 years. We still got one deputy for the entire west third of the county. These people's houses getting broke in. We got meth heads running up and down the road freely. And those are some more of the issues that's going to have to be addressed because this population uh, you know, is coming in and we're not keeping up with the growth. The jail's not keeping up with the growth. You're being victimized if you live out in these areas sometime two and three times uh, just simply because when the uh, county's not keeping up with the growth of it. Thank you, Mr. Colson. Ms. Howe, from a county perspective, what would you view as top priorities in taking advantage of the rapid growth experience in Saline County? He's exactly right. The growth of Saline County is growing tremendously, tremendously fast. People are moving from Little Rock area to Pulaski County out this way, and we have to keep up with everything we're doing. We have to keep up with watching for safety benefits for our people, for health benefits, for everything we need to watch for. And he's right about the, with the, with the jail and, and, and the sheriff's department and everything, we have to be sure and be right on spot on that because everything's moving this way and we have to take care of our people of Saline County. So that's what we do on the Quorum Court is represent our districts, each one of our people that come to us. So we have to watch and, and make sure that we can take care of our county with all these people coming this way because they're not just bringing they're all good things, some things they're bringing are bad. We have a lot of good people that are moving here, but we really need to watch, take care of our county. Thank you, Ms. Colson, or Ms. Howell, sorry. <laughs> the second question will also be directed towards you. There is an effort to build a career and technical education center in <coughs> Saline County for job training for high school students at seven local high schools. It will come to the quorum court for a decision on whether to make a ballot initiative. Is this something you would support and why or why not? Well, we're gonna vote on that next week soon. And I would support it in, in our vote because the, we are not actually, we're just putting it on the ballot for you to vote on in November. We're not actually making it a law or, a, or something permanent when we do that. But it's gonna bring a lot of there's a lot of kids that try to go to college that can't go to college. They have to go somewhere. They want to go somewhere. So if they can go to a career technical place that they can learn a trade and they can learn, it would kind of bring, a, they don't have to pay anything to do that, but it, all these kids would learn something and bring a lot of growth into Saline County for our communities and our county also. And it would, they would probably stay here in this county with that trade and that they have learned at the Career Technical College. I know it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a, a big tax, but we're only putting it out there for you people, all you to vote on. We're not taking it ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howell. Mr. Colson. There is an effort to build a career and technical education center in Saline County for job training for high school students at seven local high schools. It will come to the quorum court for a decision on whether to make a ballot initiative. Is this something you would support and why or why not? Oh yes, definitely. Anytime you're talking about uh, human development, uh, we've got to have the people trained. And when you have a, a trained group of people that can handle certain things, then the industry starts looking at your county and starts deciding, hey, they're putting out the first step forward. You know, we like this. And so you can't, expect a big corporation to come in here with good paying uh, jobs, knowing that there's nobody there that can do them. So when you take the first step and do something like that, I always support anything to, uh, for better education for the people. It's just good common economic sense. 
Thank you, Mr. Colson. You may stay standing right here. This is time for your closing statement. Mr. Colson, you have one minute. Okay. Thank you. Like I mentioned, I saw some things that hadn't been done. And we need people on the quorum courts willing to step up and do it. Now, I don't have all the answers of what it's going to take. Uh, I know anything you do, any type of thing you try to promote, it's going to probably cost some money. We've got a lot of really nice houses coming in, personal property tax money starting to come in. Uh, got some huge subdivisions going out in our district, and I'm talking about half a million plus dollar homes. That may or may not be enough, but we may have to look at some other alternatives in order to get these things accomplished. The safety and security, you know, what are we willing to pay for it? Or do we want to just keep on going down the same road, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results? It's not going to happen. You've got to do something different. And a good way to do that is start with new ideas and new people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colson. Ms. Howell, you may begin your closing statement. <laughs> Thank you. I have really enjoyed serving on the Quorum Court for seven terms. This is about eighth term that I'm running for because I love helping people. And with me, you get experience that I've had on the Quorum Court working with all the, the guys and girls there and working with my constituents. Because that, like, they, like I said, they always call me and talk to me and I immediately get up and go help them with their problems. And they've trusted me for seven terms, people have. And I know they must have trusted me for a reason. So I'm asking your vote. I'm asking for your vote for an eighth term. Thank you very much. I enjoyed this tonight so much. Thank you for the honor to be in here.